After many long months of trials and tribulations for the PS3 exploit team, the BG toolset is finally back. And what's more exciting is it supports official firmware 4.90 for all models of the PS3 Fat and nearly all models of the PS3 Slim. Grab your own PlayStation 3 and your PC. Let's get your system jailbroken together. You'll need to have your PlayStation 3 connected to the wired or wireless internet. You'll also need to have a USB drive that's been formatted in FAT32 format. A quick note for PS3 Slim owners, take a look at the model number on the back of your system. This guide's compatible with all models of the Slim except for the 3000 series. Let's take care of some key settings on your system before you get started with the jailbreak process. From the cross media bar, scroll over to the settings tab. From the settings tab, scroll down five listings in the menu until you get to system settings and select it with the X button. The first setting you'll find in this submenu is called automatic update. Make sure that this is turned off by pressing the X button. Use the D-pad to move the highlight to off and press X. You definitely don't want an official firmware version overriding your custom firmware. Inside that same submenu, here's a quality of life change I think you'll appreciate. Scroll down to the listing for display what's new and press X. You can turn this off from your cross media bar every time you start your PlayStation 3 by just changing this setting from on to off and then pressing the X button. Now that you have those set up, press circle to go back one level back to the settings tab in the cross media bar. From here, scroll down to the listing for date and time settings and press X. In this submenu, the first listing says date and time. Press X on the controller and at the submenu that appears, scroll down to set via internet and press the X button. You'll see a confirmation message on screen that your date and time has been set. Press circle to go back one level in the menus. This will make sure that your date and time are set correctly right this moment. But to make sure that these continue to stay up to date, scroll down to set automatically, press X and make sure that the setting is turned on. This actually put the system time one hour behind the correct time due to daylight savings time. If you need to make an adjustment here, scroll down to the bottom of the submenu to daylight savings time and either turn it on or off based on the time of year and your time zone. Next up, we'll need to check some settings and do some cleanup work on your browser for things to work correctly for the jailbreak process. Press the circle button until you're back at the main menu of the cross media bar. From here, scroll over through the tabs until you get to the network tab. Make sure you scroll down to internet browser and press the X button to launch the browser. All of the following actions involve pressing the triangle button on the controller to open up the side cart menu on the browser. First up, go up to tools, go to cookies, and make sure that this setting is set to allow. Press triangle, go up to tools, come down to JavaScript, and make sure that this setting is turned on. Triangle, go up to tools, this time scroll down to home page and select it with X. Change this from the default home page to blank page. Press X on blank page, scroll down to OK, and press X to continue. Triangle, Tools, this time scroll down to Delete Cookies and press X. And at the confirmation prompt, slide over to Yes and press X. Triangle, Tools, scroll down to Delete Search History and press X. Slide over to Yes and press X. Triangle, Tools, scroll down to Delete Cache and press X. Slide over to Yes, press X. Last but not least, Triangle, Tools, scroll down to Delete Authentication Information, press X, and select Yes. Now that your browser is squeaky clean, press the circle button to close the browser to go back to the cross media bar. Then press the X button to relaunch the browser. Press the Start button on your controller twice to access the virtual keyboard and web address bar. Then type in the following web address, ps3toolset.com. Once you have the address entered in, press the Start button twice on your controller. You'll likely see a blank screen on your browser for a few moments while the toolset is loaded. But hang in there and the BG toolset will be loaded to your PS3. You'll be asked if you want to install a plugin. This is the Flash plugin and it's a required element for the toolset. Slide over to Yes with the D-pad and press the X button. The BG toolset will continue to load into your browser. This process takes a few moments in real time, so just hang in there while it does its magic. Along the way, you'll see a pop-up message appear in the center of the screen with information about donating to the PS3 exploit team. I've donated to them and I hope that you'll consider doing the same. They've been through a lot to get this toolset back online for us to use, and even a small donation to them goes a long way to support their efforts. Once you've read the pop-up message, use the thumbstick to bring the cursor down to OK and press the X button to continue. Once you see the clean up text message in the bottom left corner of the screen, the toolset is loaded and ready to go. Use the thumbstick to move the pointer arrow up to System Manager and press the X button. You'll see a new series of menus and submenus appear. To speed up future processes, let's go ahead and bookmark this page. Press the select button on your controller. Make sure add to bookmarks is highlighted and press X. Then press X to save this bookmark to your internet browser. 
Before you go any further in the process, let's go ahead and make a backup of your PlayStation 3's flash memory. Start by inserting your FAT32 formatted USB drive into the rightmost USB port on your PlayStation 3. Focus your attention on this part of the toolset window. You'll see a listing here called Flash Memory. Hover over it with the pointer and press X. You'll see a pop-out option that says Save Flash Memory Backup. Move the pointer to it with the thumbstick and press the X button. This opens up a window with a list of storage locations available to your PlayStation 3. You've already inserted the USB drive that's formatted in FAT32, so you should have a listing for Dev USB 000. Hover over it with the pointer, press X, then choose Save in the bottom right corner by pressing the X button. The flash memory backup process can take from several seconds to several minutes depending upon your model of PlayStation 3. Once the backup process is complete, the pointer will automatically be moved to close in the bottom right corner of the window. Press X to close out the backup tool. Transition over to your PC. There are a couple of things you'll need to download at this point. The first one is called Pi PS3 Checker. Its job is to verify the quality of the backup of your flash memory. There's a text download link near the bottom right corner of the window. Click on it to grab the software. You'll also need a custom firmware file to install to your PlayStation 3 once it's patched and ready. That file is hosted on the PSX Place website. Scroll down through this first post until you see the listing for the download section. You'll see several choices here, including listings for custom firmware where everything works correctly on your system, along with options for systems with faulty Blu-ray or Bluetooth hardware. This PS3 Slim used in the video is healthy, so I'll choose the first option. These links take you to mega.nz where you can download the custom firmware. Click the large download button shown here. Give the Mega website a moment to queue up the file and it will be downloaded to your computer. In your downloads folder, let's start by dealing with Pi PS3 Checker. It's a standard zip file and you can use the built-in Windows Extraction tool to unzip it. Once you have this file unzipped, delete it from your downloads folder. Pardon the switcheroo of the file and folder here, it's just from jumping ahead in the video recording process. I'm going to take the File Explorer window from Downloads and put it on the left side of the screen. Go ahead and take the USB drive out of your PlayStation 3 and insert it into your PC. I'm going to take this File Explorer window and put it on the right side of the screen. It has a file in there called dump.hex. That file is the backup of your PlayStation 3's flash memory. Over in the Downloads folder, double click into the Pi PS3 Checker folder. Grab the dump.hex file and drag and drop it directly into the Pi PS3 folder. There's a batch file inside this folder called drag and drop your dump here. Take the dump.hex file and drag and drop it directly onto this batch file. You'll see the batch file run a series of tests. This is the data that you're looking for. At the bottom of the test results, look for the checks that specifically say total number of dangers equals zero and total number of warnings equals zero. If you see anything other than zeros for these two listings, stop here and go back and re-dump the flash memory from your PlayStation 3. Now that you have the dump file backed up, you can delete it off of your USB storage. Do make sure to save either the dump.hex file or the entire Pi PS3 folder somewhere on your computer because it has that important dump.hex backup of your original PlayStation 3's flash memory. Go back one level in the File Explorer window to the root of the Downloads folder. The other file that you downloaded is a 7Z file that contains the custom firmware. This one does not natively uncompress inside Windows, so you'll have to use a tool like Zipware, an open source unzipping tool, in order to extract it. You can go ahead and extract this file to its predetermined path. It'll create a folder inside your downloads folder containing the custom firmware and several other files. Double click into that folder and you'll see a folder inside here called PS3. Grab this folder and drag it directly onto the root of your USB storage. It already has the appropriate folder and subfolder structure needed for your PlayStation 3 to find the custom firmware file. Once it's copied over, remove the USB storage from your computer and put the USB drive back in the rightmost USB port on your PlayStation 3 console. The most likely thing that's happened since you last left your PlayStation 3 is that the toolset timed out. All you need to do is close the web browser, relaunch it, and go right back to the toolset. Give the toolset a moment to load, and just like you did before, when prompted, accept the plugin. Once the tool set is completely loaded, go back up to System Manager and select it with X. Focus your attention near the center of the screen. You'll see a text listing here in the menus called Flash Memory Patch. Navigate to it with the pointer and press X. In the pop-up menu that appears, scroll down through the listings to Load Patch via HTTP and select it with X. The necessary patch file will be automatically downloaded to your system. Once the process is complete, the cursor will automatically move to close in the bottom right corner, select it with the X button. Flash memory patch should still be highlighted. Move the cursor back over to it and press X to pull up the submenu. 
This time from the list of choices, scroll the highlight arrow down to Apply Loaded Patch and select it with X. You'll see a pop-up message confirming that you want to install the patch. Select Yes to continue. The patching process takes a couple of minutes in real time. Once the patching process is complete, the arrow will automatically be moved down to close in the bottom right corner of the window. Select it with X. For the final patching process, you'll need to restart your PlayStation 3. Press the circle button to close the browser, and back at the cross media bar, slide all the way to the left to user. Scroll up to turn off system and select it with X. At the confirmation prompt, slide over to yes and select it with X. Then turn your PlayStation 3 right back on. Now you're ready to install the custom firmware to your system. At the cross media bar, scroll over to settings. The first listing at the top is for system update, select it with the X button. Scroll down to the listing for update via storage media and select it with X. Here you'll see that you can install the custom firmware for version 4.90 from EvilNap. Simply follow the on-screen instructions to install this custom firmware file the way you would any official firmware. Your PlayStation 3 will restart during the install process. Be sure to press the PS button on your controller when you see this screen. When your PS3 restarts, you should see the EvilNap logo at the splash screen. And if you can now access the package manager at the game tab, you've installed custom firmware successfully. But there's still one problem. You don't have any packages to install yet. Let's fix that. Check out this video on playing backups of your favorite PS3, PS2, PS1, and PSP games on your newly modded system with Mana Guns. I'll see you there.